So this is Unallocated Space. We are a 501c3 nonprofit, been around for about 10 years. We are community um, funded makerspace slash hackerspace. So everything we do and are able to enjoy is from the community. That includes things such as like 3D printing, laser cutting, um, ham radios, simple lectures, as well as uh, self-hosted equipment for hosting some malware labs and some fun other projects that a makerspace or hackerspace would want to do. We're always looking for more volunteers to do things. And people generally volunteer themselves in a couple of different ways. Uh, some people donate their time, uh, meaning that they would like to mentor people, teach a class, um, or just help fix up the shop a little bit. People share their knowledge in a similar regard. Uh, sometimes that means like writing up some blog posts or some materials or again, teaching classes. We appreciate everything everyone does, whether it's time, money, or skills. Everyone is valued. There's a lot of different ways that people can get interested in Allocate Space. And uh, we do host classes virtually and in person, rather events. We are available on uh, Google Groups, Slack, Discord, Twitter, and we have a small blog. And with that, I'm going to unshare my screen and give you the helm. Thank you again for hosting. That's a pleasure. Uh, hello, I am Jose Smith. I uh, work for Sanayu, which is SMEs On Demand. I, I primarily do security engineering type of classes for unallocated, but here I am doing soldering. Uh, I started my career as a hardware technician, soldering components, hence hands with lots of little burn marks all over them. So you will see said hands throughout this uh, event. What we are working with is the Weevil Kit. This kit is going to help you with soldering, working with LEDs, working with photocells, and even though we hadn't really said much, how to clip leads. So what we're going to do is take out your kit, verify you have one Weevil uh, board, two of the red diffused five millimeter LEDs, a single 47K ohm resistor. These are really, really tiny resistors. I would go through a class and doing how to read the uh, um, bands, but as you can see, these bands are super tiny. So what you're gonna wanna do is one of them has a, a by themselves and one is two, or two of them are, or one package is two of them. Keep these paper tape on them because you're going to have a problem of keeping track which is which otherwise, because these ones are only 220 ohm resistors. You'll have one transistor, a miniature photo cell, a coin cell battery holder, and that is the equipment that comes in the kit, plus a coin battery. If you do not have this material, You'll need to stop, scrounge around for any materials if you happen to have them, or uh, contact wherever you got the kit and get the replacement. So now let's go into the tools we will be using. We have some clips. You will need these. We have this arm, which was highly recommended because you're when soldering, you're going to feel like you need four or even six hands to get things going. You will need copper wicking material so that if you make a mistake, you have the ability to uh, correct the mistake. Solder. And that comes in a wide variety. The solder I am using is 60% 10, 40% lead with a 2% flux at one millimeter. Now you may not hear it in the background because we are working with lead solder. I have a really big fan blowing away from my space towards an open window. I also have a very nice sweatshirt that I have pulled up so that it doesn't cover my uh, hands or wrists because more than likely it would get burned by the uh, soldering iron. Uh, when soldering, make sure you are wearing clothes that you don't care about. When soldering, make sure you always wear eye protection because when we come to the next component, which is the soldering iron, never, ever, ever touch the tip of your soldering iron, even if you think it's cold, because the time that you touch it and it isn't cold, you're gonna have a problem. The only time I ever will adjust 
this nut to on any of this would be if I took it out of the box and I know it has not been plugged in at all. Also, you want, for me, I have an adjustable, let's see if it actually will zoom in. Yeah, okay, there. I have an adjustable dial for my soldering iron that gets me to the exact temperature I want. For me, I'm going with 300 degrees. So think about that. This tip is getting to 300, uh, this tip is getting to 300 degrees. So you definitely don't want it to touch you, which goes down to this, where we'll have a wet sponge because you'll need that for cleaning off. If you are looking like you're going to drop your soldering iron, back away from it. Treat it as a falling knife. Do not try to catch it. Do not try to catch any components. Uh, one thing I've learned when doing hardware uh, technician work, you get really good at, as a component starts to drop, you turn your head to try to hear where it's going to bounce. Because never want to try to catch a component because you never know if that component's going to be a charged capacitor, a hot soldering iron, and so on and so forth. I also have off camera some tweezers in case I actually need them. I didn't need them last time, but it's always good to have. In my corner, I have my business card. And that covers our workspace. So page one, the, the first two pages in this are actually really good information. You're not trying to solder with the exact tip of your soldering iron. You want this nice little sweet spot, which is right there. Let's see if actually if I do this, it'll show. Yeah, right here is where you want to be. You're not going to, you don't want to, you know, well, ah, that actually will work out very well using this as if it's the soldering iron. You're not going to want to use your soldering iron to touch the metal on these. You're not going to try, you're not going to, or sorry, you're not going to want to touch the solder directly. You're not going to really want to touch the board directly. What you'll want to do is when you slide the component in, You're going to then, what I normally do was I'll bend the legs in different directions. Then I will touch the solder in there and then bring the iron to the lead to warm up the lead. And that will be enough to warm up the solder. And then the solder will flow into the component and then up to the other side. Then what you'll want to do is as you see things building up on this, or really, it's any time I go to try to set my soldering iron down, I will usually wipe it off. That's just purely out of habit. What you're trying to do is get these nice dimples. Because that means you have a nice flow all the way through the board and maybe even touching the other side of the component a little bit. As we get more advanced with these components, you're going to have to get much more careful with how hot you allow that component to get. So in the later videos, you'll see me holding the component physically right there when putting everything in and soldering, because if it gets too hot for my fingers, it's probably starting to get too hot for the component. All the components we have here are really durable. This is why this is the first kit. Um, when soldering, do not just put a dab of solder on the top as a ball. You wanna make sure it goes into the board uh, when flowing, you want to make sure it flows up and over the hole, not because once you get into the hole, yes, that's fine. But as this, and it will probably work for the first couple of days, but then it'll eventually it'll start having a problem. Also, you don't want to use too much solder because then you'll bleed over to another uh, pole, which means pulling out this. Because what you would then do is put this in that spot, use a soldering iron on the copper to then push and then, and then pull off. It'll wick the solder up. Here we go. Let's start with our first component. So for me, I have a switch on my soldering iron, so I'm gonna bring it up to temperature. We're starting with the 47, which is the one by itself. I'm going to take this. I am now going to move the, this up here because I'm not gonna need this. Move the instructions up. I have my arms. Hey, that actually works pretty good. 
So this is going to want to turn itself a little. Excellent. Now for me, it's zoomed in really well. You, it's not so good. I, I think I've figured out a way to take care of this a little bit better next time. So I'm taking this component. Now that I know that that zooms in nicely, let's remove this. I'm going to slightly bend, slightly bend, then pull it in so I get this. I'm now going to push through, because this component doesn't care what side is a which, which the LEDs will and then the transistor will. We then push in so it gets nice and snug, and you can see it is right up against that board. Now on this side, I'm going to push one away, one away. In this case, this component is much easier than any of the other ones. There's not much next to it. So let's then clip it in. There we go. I will then, with my left hand, take my solder, right hand. I can hear a hiss. Let's come in on the component and the solder. Come on. Beautiful. Nice peak. Beautiful. So you'll see what I did there. I, as I pulled away, I pulled away in the direction of the wire on that second one, because what I want to do is make sure. Let's see if I can make this a little easier on you all. Oh, there, that's actually pretty good. So what I did was I pulled away because I know I'm going to be able to clip that wire and that will just take all that extra solder off with it. So I'm going to pull the wires up a little bit to give me a little bit of purchase surface and clip. clip. Beautiful. So there, now we have two nice little dimples. Now we have to be careful because on this back side, Oh, and I, I might not have said it. You always want to, so for this kit, you're going to be doing all your solders except for two points on the black side, not the white side. Because this um, battery kit, this battery is going to sit here. So you want to make sure you don't go, you don't have your peaks coming too far off the board. So if necessary, go in and clip a little extra off. Beautiful. Everything that we just talked about was in the instructions, inserting it, pushing the resistor in, pulling the legs apart, getting the component warm, moving the solder in, um, pull solder away first, and then your solder joint should look like that. Solder the next leg into place, clip off the excess. Now we are going to do the other resistors. So let's grab the other resistors, which are the two that were connected to each other. Like I said, bend it just just a little outside, just a little. So that way when you pull the legs in, it's not going to try to snap or it's not going to try to bend at the component. Okay, remember, wire's cheap. But components, well, I guess components are cheap nowadays as well, but um, there we go. I'm not going to get into the part where you want to make sure all your bands are facing the right way. That'd be 
that gets into way more advanced than we are actually going to get into. So this, I don't want to pull the legs away. Like this becomes a little bit more difficult. I'm going to pull this leg this way and this leg to kind of cross it a little bit because I don't want it near this top hole and I don't want them near these. This, but this other component I can pull away and away. So see, that way you have two that are going off to the side and this kind of crosses because I want to make sure that there's a amount of space between here and there's a space between here and there is no space, here. there's space here because I don't want these two holes to get uh, soldered together. So let's clip this into place. Let's get this component hot. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's nice. Excellent. Okay, let's take a look. See how that actually turned out. Components are, are the connections are solid. I can feel across here. Those are nice and good. Let's give it a clip. Make sure we hadn't crossed over. And it looks like, yeah, that center one is nice and solid. As you can see, we are not in the other holes. We got very close up here, but we are not actually in that hole. Wonderful. Next, we're going to do the... So the, 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 the kit calls for this one next. I don't like to do that one next. I like to do this one, the photoresistor next, be just because of placement. Uh, I find it's easier when I was doing this kit. So this one, I didn't really bend the legs because it's it fits, the distance is actually pretty close right there already. And then I pull one in all the way, then pull the other in, there we go. But I've noticed with the, the transistor, if you do that one first, it makes doing the photoresistor a little bit more difficult. Where I would like to, oh, for some reason, my arm wants to move. Do not move things around while, there we go. Excellent. Let's see if we can get this component nice and hot. And see that one I didn't get nearly as good. There we go, much better. Yeah, much better. Good. That one I messed up a little bit in the first part because I was getting some, like if I was actually doing this for a professional install, I would have redone this and pulled more off. But when I first was getting the material in, like you could see it wicked up into the component but didn't but and that's and it was fl it already flowed in but then i wasn't having that uh, dimple on this side but we now have working pieces and still i am very close to having almost no standing out surfaces there. So now we take this component. Now this, they give us a nice silk screen so you know what side. So what I do is very gently pull this a little away, pull this leg a little away. And now that I got a little bit of give, pull a little bit closer to there, because I'm trying to just pull these legs very slowly. 
Give it a tiny bit of give. There we go. Um, I probably should have told you right away. When handling electronics, you want to make sure you're properly grounded. I have a mat here, which is excellent for that. When we get to the more advanced components, we're going to be wearing one of these anti-static mats or anti-static uh, wristbands that will hit us back to ground. But with handling these, this is uh, these are these are extremely durable components. So as long as you're not holding the component and dragging your feet across the carpet, you will be fine. So you're going to want to feed the three legs into the three holes. Which for me, there we go. And then get it down as far as you want. This, I'm just going to have it sit pretty high off just because... There's no reason not to. I, you could really fight it if you want. But the important part is you're going to pull the leg, one leg, one direction, one leg, the other. And you want to pull these legs, outer legs, to face each other. Because you don't want them to be facing away towards the other components and risk getting a short there. Okay. Here we go. Remember to, like I said, the reason why I pulled these the way they did is so that I can get the solder and pull away. And you see how close that is? There, that one got really close as well. Excellent. We have three beautiful dimples. There we go. Wonderful. All filled in. Clip. 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 And we see. You can actually see that there are four distinct holes there. You can see that I made sure to keep it nice and flush. Now we're going with the LEDs. LEDs, you have to get these correct. There is a long leg and a short leg. So long leg, short leg, long leg, short leg. You're going to want to... Oops, from the top of the board, so this is from the white side, the long leg will be on the left. And we want to pull these away, pull these away. And I do a, a nice V for these. And make sure the long leg is on the appropriate side. And then another V, another V. There we go. Uh, when working with these, because you'll see my, my board starting to get a little sticky. Uh, having a, a bottle of isopropic alcohol with a, a um, cotton swab or a, a, cotton, a cotton ball will help. So you can uh, clean this off when you're done. But since we're not working for perfection, I don't feel like cleaning this off. Let's get a good solder here. Oh, let's get this in camera. Come on. Okay, yeah, that one's in. That one's in. That's a lot of solder on that one. Oh, well. There. 
There we go. Beautiful. Just use a lot of solder, though. If I was doing this professionally, I would have used the wicking material to clean up a lot more of this. But right now we're just doing a very simple kit, which gives us the components are nice and solid on here. These are nice and clipped. So here we go. Uh, battery now will come in through here. So this, you're going to see there's a problem here. You're not going to be very easily be able to... Um, the leads are really short. So you have to figure out which lead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my clip to hold this in place like this, knowing that the leads are not going to be sticking out very much and that my battery pack will be slightly off center. You want to be careful that you're soldering just enough to get the connection, but that you don't go too, that it doesn't uh, go too far through and pull on the other side. You won't be able to tell until you go to test it if you went too far. Let's, let's see if I went too far. This one I'm not clipping just because uh, this one you could easily mess up over and over again or if you need to troubleshoot further components, you want to be able to quickly um, undo the components. Let's get this battery in. So I have a lot of lights here, so I'm going to turn off this one. And now when I cover the sensor, the lights turn on. So that was the Weevil kit and that took us all of 30 minutes. So I was able to power through this. I've done this kit many times. Do not take how long it took me as an indication how fast you should on your first time through. It may take you an hour to go through, and last time we had some that took a bit longer. So we have the kit. As you saw, our component, our transistor sticks out a bit more. Like if I was to really clean this up, I would have taken my tweezers and pulled these legs a little further apart so that I could pull it further in. But I wasn't trying to damage anything, and on this side, we don't need to be so flush. As you can see, my, my battery kit is slightly off kilter. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's fine for, for this kit. When we get into the more advanced kits, we're definitely going to have to be more careful with uh, placement to make sure that we know exactly where every component is, try to be conserve solder. Um, but that's it. I'm uh, DigiRain on the Slack channel. Feel free to come and talk to me if you have any problems with assembling one of these kits or if you want to talk about security engineering or system automation. It's been a pleasure, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Oh, sorry. When turning off your soldering iron, uh, leave it for an hour before you really want to move it. <laughs> but uh, Jelly, back to you. That's it. Thank you very much for your time and instructing this for us. That's been my pleasure. I still have mine here. I pulled it out just in case like we had people come and be like, hey, yeah, like I made one too. I, I, I like these things. I love uh, being able to learn how to troubleshoot like issues and like making them less intimidating. So like, like it's, it sounds kind of dumb, but like, you know, can you take apart a TV or like if you, you know, break like, oh, like an antenna, like, oh, how hard is it to fix? And oh, it's not, not really that hard. A little bit of solder, a little bit of research and you're done. I like well, that. 
then also it's a problem it's trying to figure out uh what you can do with the components you have a, a mm -hmm. this 13 14 dollar soldering kit can solve a lot of little problems mm -hmm. where then you slowly work your way in and getting like cable crimping tools and uh line testers um that's where you start to get much more advanced where getting yourself ha or having a multimeter kit is very useful. Mm -hmm. Like when we get to not the next kit, but the kit after that, I would definitely suggest having a multimeter available if you don't, it's not required, but it's definitely useful. I have two. And like, I give, I, I, it's funny. I give them out people's gifts for Christmas sometimes. Because there, there have been a couple of times where I've had someone like ask, actually, like even like last year, someone asked me um, if they could borrow a multimeter fix their washer. Oh, yeah. And sure enough, save themselves a couple hundred bucks by replacing a cap. Yeah, multimeter is great for that. Um, now, I also then will go as far as getting myself a nice fox and hound. So that way Ooh. I have a nice one that uh, will let me know if a line is hot. Mm -hmm. So that way, so it, it does both a signal, uh, detecting signal for AC current, and it'll give me a chirp. But then also you can flip it to a second mode where you put the um, the, uh, the fox uh, clipped somewhere on the line. And that way you can just run the wand as the hound to find exactly where that line is for when you I have think, deadlines. I think I had something like that at, G, at uh, G2 where like I, I had to find like we have one cable outside the wall for a, a POE uh, camera. And I spent I spent a long time trying to find that Ethernet cable. Yeah, yeah, those when, are those are fun. Once you know it was the last patch, it was the last patch, <laughs> the one that was marked as being empty, no less. <laughs> yes, I my last time I was setting up a data center. That's back when I was doing uh, data center architecture. We would have those, but we'd have the fire. We would have the Firebird mm -hmm. on the crash cart because it just made sense to do that because then I could just plug in an entire switches worth or a star switches worth of patch panels and then find all of them wherever they need to be with the because that the, the, the one they had the the spaghetti or the octopus version mm -hmm. when I plugged in uh, one of the endpoints to that it would tell me this is line one or all the way up to line eight. So I could hunt, so I could plug in eight lines at one end and then run over and find by which one each of these are, mm -hmm. which made it much easier when you're, instead of having to hunt, you know, plug in one and then run around all the different, um, different ports inside and then different offices. But I have no idea how much that thing cost. But, okay, but it's been a pleasure and I will... Talk with you later.